this is the challenge that we will present to you and we present to the thousands of teachers that we serve across the state of Texas. Well, for the keynote tonight, I would like to uh, focus my remarks on a topic that is absolutely critical for transforming the culture of our educational system, and that is leadership. You know what we do in this program? We develop your leadership capacity, we invest in you, and we go and to schools and say, how is it that we can transform those schools by playing our leadership role in those schools? So I want to uh, really hit on several points when it comes to leadership. And if I were you, whether you are good grapes, meaning a young teacher, or wine, a veteran teacher, I invite you to really think about these attributes and ask yourself day in and day out, what is it that I can do today to be better than yesterday in these attributes? And what is it that I can do tomorrow to be better than today? And that's the nature of this program. It's a continuous improvement. It's investment in ourselves to ensure that we continue to improve the quality and autograph our work with excellence. So, attribute number one when it comes to leadership is vision. How many of you have heard of the word vision? And uh, you've probably gone to courses about vision. Every school must have a vision and they put the statement, etc. So what is vision? Any suggestion? What is vision? Insight into the future. Hmm? Focus. Insight into the future. Okay, insight into the future. The focus. All right. Martin, what do you think? What is vision? Seeing beyond the horizon. Seeing beyond the horizon. Any other <coughs> suggestions? What is vision? You know, if you don't have a vision, there is no future. As they say, uh, where there is no vision, there is no development, there is no improvement, there is no success, there is no achievement. The best way I define a vision is a very simple example uh, that I have shared in Colombia, in Saudi Arabia, in Sultanate Oman, in so many places, and people come to me and tell me, they've been sending us to courses about vision for 10 years. I did not understand what vision is. Through this simple example, we can connect to the word vision. Let me very briefly tell you about it. You know, in Lebanon, that's where I am from, we love grapevines, so we grow grapes. So in Austin, my little Lebanon, I wanted to grow grapes. So I called somebody to build arbors for me. So he built an arbor. It was like 65 feet, with six feet high. And so he built the arbors, and I went to the nursery and picked the grapevines. They were this big. And I was so sure about my conviction to grow grapes. So I went, took those small plants, which the gardener, the nursery guy told me, you know, Dr. Bailey, you know you're not going to get grapes until five years from now. I told him, I understand. <laughs> so I go home to my arbor, and I started planting my small grapevines. So I'm digging to plant the grapevines, under the arbor. As I was planting them, I was looking up and seeing the grapes hanging five years later. Seeing them. I was seeing grapes hanging five years later. 
Now that's vision. All right? Now it was very important for me to see the graves. And therefore a leader, a president, a dean must see the graves. But it's equally important that I enroll my family, my wife, my daughters, my son, to see the graves, to see the vision. And that's what we mean by enrolling your people to see the vision. Because they have to help me achieve that vision. To water the plants, to fertilize them, to take care of them so that that vision is achieved and all of us will reap the benefit of that vision. Every leader must be able to envision and enroll other people in the vision. And you teachers have an obligation and responsibility to help guide your students toward that vision of their future. That's number one, vision, attribute of leadership. Second attribute is effective communication. It doesn't matter what field you work in you have to have effective communication. And communication is a huge word. I can talk about it for two days. <laughs> but when we talk about communication, we talk about effective written communication and effective oral communication, communicating to people from their point of view, strategic communication, via email, letter writing, all kinds of communication. And you, teachers, without communication, there is no way you can be an effective teacher. Not only communicating to your students, but also to communicating to your whole system. As you come to Dr. Roberts' session to attend professional development, you teachers have an obligation to go your, to your superintendent and principal and communicate with them the benefit that you reap from this program and the impact of this program on student achievement, on the science and math program in the schools. Effective communication is a very important attribute of leadership. You know, if you take two organization, two people. One is successful and not one is not so successful. Look for communication. It's all about communication. Communication is the reason we have so many divorces, we have so many conflicts, we have so many wars. It's all about communication. And I cannot tell you how important Written communication is nowadays, you know that not many people can write a paragraph or a page without mistakes, without, <clears throat> without really being lost in what the message behind that paragraph. So effective communication is very important. It's been said if you speak well, you make a great impression on people in your presence. If you write well, you make great impression on people in your absence. I have never met John F. Kennedy, but I read by John F. Kennedy, ask not what your country can do for you, but what you can do for your country. So you can make an incredible impact if you are an effective written communicator. Another attribute of uh, leadership is really big picture thinking, system thinking. And uh, all of us, superintendents, principals, deans, professors, teachers, we have to be system thinkers. We need to understand that we are part of a system. We need to be able to see all the components of the system and know that in system thinking, you cannot improve a system by only changing one component. We call that Le Chatelier's principle in chemistry. How many of you are in chemistry? So if you do anything to a, a, a system, it's gonna react in such a way to establish a new equilibrium. So we need to understand 
that we are part of a system and see the big picture, look at relationships, connections, rather than snapshots and isolated facts and information. And in math and science, we have a bigger challenge of being big system thinkers. Because as you know, in math and science, we focus so much on data, sequential stuff. Uh, but data is only important if we look at the information we derive from that data and then act on that information. Often in science classes, we do an experiment, we collect data, and at the end, students go home and they're very proud of the data. Data is important. But what information do we, do we derive from that data? And how do we act on that information? You know, information uh, is all around us. The difference between me and Marsha or Dr. Gobin is not the fact that he or I have more information. It's how we use the information. Information is like a sword. It is not the sword that makes you a hero. It's how you use the sword. And guess what? Information is becoming so obsolete nowadays. So you can add, how soon you use the sword? It could be the difference between life and death, literally. But figuratively, you know that it is absolutely important that we not only focus on data, but we also focus on the information and acting on that information. Uh, 